Way back in 2016, Brad and I took the trip of a lifetime to film on the west coast of the USA. While there, we had the joy of drinking at Russian River's original brew pub and interviewing brewing legend and co-founder Vinny Salerzzo. Even as the haze train rolled in, the long afternoon we spent drinking pints of Pliny remains our IPA highlight of all time. But now, we might have a new one on the way. I'm going to write something I never thought I'd write, which is Russian <laughs> River Westy. Way, look at that. Come on. Amazing, Johnny. I can't believe we're actually here. The Brudio is built. After so much time, yeah. so much effort, this is a momentous occasion for Craft Beer Channel. Yeah, without a doubt, it's the biggest thing we've ever done. The biggest project, it took nearly a year, yeah. and one of the biggest moments, I think, in the history of the channel, that we now have our own space where we can experiment, where we can brew, where we can film. Shout out to the Patreons and all the viewers out there. You have directly funded this wonderful yeah. building and enabled us to brew in our own space. And Amazing. another shout out to the in-laws that helped us, <laughs> helped us build it. <laughs> so yeah, we need to brew something super special to celebrate this with our yeah. grandfather kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the inaugural brew. It's got to be special, mate. We've got to do something way out there. Something yeah. amazing, something I, I want in my life. Something, I need something special, Johnny. Well, I was thinking exactly on that. Right. What, what are you missing most in beer at the moment? International travel. <laughs> other, other than that, I was thinking, what's better than international? What, what, <laughs> what can possibly replace international travel? Okay. A beer from the States, our favourite oh, okay. place to drink. So something that would take me, uh, you know, a memory, I drink it and I feel like I was back somewhere amazing again. Exactly. Oh, I love it. So I was thinking one of our favourite ever experiences yes. was our trip yes. to the West Coast. Oh, West is the best. So why don't we brew? Yes. A West Coast, I thought you were going to chip in there. A West Coast a IPA. A West Coast IPA. <laughs> Mate, I, I think that is a splendid idea. There is, there is not enough West Coast IPA on these shores. Absolutely not. Or any shores right now. Yeah, exactly. We put it in our big in 2022, partly out of the fact that we've seen more being made in the UK, but also out of blind hope. And we're going to contribute to it by brewing a West Coast IPA as the first brew in the Brudio, which means the mm. first thing we have to do is come up with a recipe. Right. So I've brought along my favourite West Coast IPA of late. Nice. Which is the absolutely amazing alligator tugboat from Pressure Drop. Yeah, that is a beaut. I was drinking this last night. Were you? And I mean, it's all Simcoe, it's all pine, it's so bitter, it makes you kind of angry, but then kind of laugh with joy. I can Ooh, smell it soon as angry, I can. Angry laughing, eh? Exactly. Amazing. Angry laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how Brad lives his life, but apparently it's how I do. Uh, Interesting way to be. Laughter, like, like, like a, a super criminal. Something. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Yeah. Maniacal laughing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, let's use this for some inspiration. Firstly, clarity. That is. That's going to be important. That's an old friend, isn't it? That is. You don't get that aroma very often anymore. It's, it is like, you know, you, hugging an old friend. Just having a bit too much of a sniff of them, More maybe. specifically, hugging an old tree. <laughs> an old pine tree that yeah. somebody's smothered in dolce de leche. And maybe someone smokes some dank weed. Below. Potentially nearby, yeah. Oh, you can't beat that, can How you? How good is that? It's so crisp and clean, so gluggable, but loads of caramel, loads of pine, a little bit of dankness, a little bit of citrus grapefruity thing. It's just... It's just amazing. If our beer was half this beer, I'd be delighted. Have you got any thoughts? So we've got Simcoe, we've got definite like caramelly sweetness, so Munich or, or caramel or, or, or crystal malt. Who knows? Yes, Maybe we'll yes. go really old school. Well, any thoughts? So I brought along a uh, Thornbridge Jaipur, uh -huh. which is obviously a, a Stone Cold classic. Definitely, we've got, we're getting lemon, grapefruit, orange, much more citrusy. A kind bit. of a cracker biscuit thing. Yeah, biscuity, a little bit kind of like, yeah, like you say, citrusy, a little bit grassy. So there's lots of different hops in this. There's some definite kind of lemon and grapefruit and, and citric character that this one lacks a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we could bring a bit of that in with some, maybe some Amarillo, maybe, I don't know, just something, something less dank and piney mm. and something a bit more citric to balance it out. I mean, obviously, we got to brew with somebody on the West Coast. It's got, so. We've got to keep it OG. Got any ideas? Well, it's, it's, it's funny you ask. Go because I, I took the liberty of just, when I came up with the idea of West Coast, just firing off an email to somebody who we met on our trip to the West Coast oh. um, to see if they'd be interested in a collab. 
Cue dramatic music. No, you didn't! Yes, I did. So you knew that was coming, it was in the thumbnail, it was in the intro, but I'm still incredibly excited to say that yes, we are going to be brewing a homebrew West Coast IPA in collaboration with Russian River. And that means having a chat and coming up with a recipe with one of the most revered brewers and one of the loveliest men I've ever met in beer, Vinny Salerzzo. His brewing chops are un indisputable, uh, Blind Pig and Pliny, despite the fact that you know they're both crystal clear, quintessential West Coast IPAs have never waned um, in the popularity and in the reputation that they have, despite the haze craze that came over 15 years after they first brewed Pliny and Blind Pig. That's how good these beers are, and it's also how much, uh, how hard Vinny's worked to make sure that his beers continue to improve, continue to reflect to some extent uh, the modern palate without ever changing the souls of those beers. Um, and he's gonna help us put a bit of soul into our old West Coast IPA idea. So I've got to come up with a recipe that is going to get the nod from Vinny. Um, so I very, very nervously have put one together based off of the two beers that we tried uh, when Brad came over, um, and also based on some ideas that I've sort of had that I've wanted to do for a long time. And all of that started with looking up um, the homebrew advice that Vinny has given before, uh, and looking at like homebrew forums where people have guessed and had educated guesses and chats with Vinny about uh, the recipes for Pliny and for Blind Pig. So I've sent that recipe to Vinny. He hasn't talk to me about the recipe yet, but we have scheduled a call now, and we're gonna be chatting it through and coming up with a final recipe for me to brew next. Vinny, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to work with little old us. It's very exciting to be coming up with a recipe with you. Ah, good deal, thanks for having me. So I, th I was trying to find a West Coast IPA I could, I could drink, and they've been harder and harder to find because of the way that IPA is, is going, but I did, uh, I've got a triple IPA from Heretic. Oh, cool on the go it's 11.5 percent so yeah i'll make sense to start and we'll see see how we're going good old jameel giving you the alcohol <laughs> exactly we've been chatting by our email and i've sent you a recipe should we start to dig into there and yeah absolutely i have it uh i have it pulled up on my other screen here can't tell you how nerve-wracking it is to, to send nah, nah. you a recipe <laughs> it's okay so maybe we should start with the malt um and have a chat through that our base malt can be a little bit uh, lighter in flavor. And so for Blind Pig, we typically do, uh, you know, we use a lot of North American two row malt, but we do throw in 20% uh, uh, Best Pale, which, which you have on the recipe. Uh, best Pale from Simpson is one of my absolute favorite malts. It's just such a beautiful round. Boy, if I could use that full time, I, I absolutely would. <laughs> um, so, so what I would maybe suggest is um, to, if you want to, if you like more body and mouthfeel, just leave it as best pale. Let's move on to the crystal caramel and then the carapils. So uh, in the early days of uh, Blind Pig and Pliny the Elder, we did use uh, crystal and caramel malt. It was actually uh, crystal 40. Uh, a couple few years ago, we actually replaced all of our crystal malts in our IPAs and switched to Munich of the same color or, or in the ballpark. So we now use a Munich 30 or 40 and the idea is that crystal malt also aids in oxidation. The, the kilning process uh, in the drum row, the roasting process, excuse me, in the drum roaster um, is, is creating uh, some negative attributes in the crystal malt that aids in uh, oxidation. So let's, uh, let's move to the boil. Obviously, when we're brewing New England IPAs, which we've done a lot on the channel, we're talking all about the end additions. Uh, maybe with a little bit of usually sort of magnum or something with a really clean bitterness. Yeah. But you were really, you wanted to talk about the idea of adding throughout the boil. Yeah. Um, to, to, uh, what, what does that particularly add when you're going in between those two modern extremes? Yeah, so it's, it, to me, it's really a, um, it gives some hops, you know, through the palate all the way through when you're drinking that beer, you're carrying this hop flavor all the way through instead of it just being this, this blast, you know, at kind of, you, know, you get this big aroma, you know, like in a more progressive IPA, um, and then you get this, you know, big finish of hops. But for me personally, I'm, I'm left a little bit, it's lacking when you don't have a mid-boil addition. We make a, what, what I'll call a progressive IPA. It's, a, it's clean in color, it's clear in color, but it has all the attributes of a hazy from a hop standpoint. We've actually, when we started making, it's called Happy Hops. 
when we started making it, we used you know, a small amount of hops at the bittering addition and then backloaded it like most hazies do and then a big dry hop charge. And now we are little by little adding some hops back at 15 minutes. And, and that's, that's as far as we've gone to try to gain a little more of this mouthfeel of hops. Um, so yeah, so we, we've got some Simcoe. I've, I've put it at 30 minutes, but maybe I could, you know, to experiment and try, I could, I could add it a little bit earlier and, and spread out a bit more Simcoe um, or Columbus. Yeah, and if, you wanted, and if you wanted to be more true to type, I would probably throw some, you know, Cascade and Centennial because we don't, we don't traditionally add Simcoe until the Whirlpool edition. Right. So um, we, we use Cascade at 45 minutes and Centennial at 30 minutes. Um, so if you had some of those available, that would, that would make it more true to type. Um, we also use Amarillo in some Amarillo in uh, Blind Pig. Again, about the same contribution as Simcoe. It's, it's about, you know, 10% or 12% somewhere in there. Uh, so, uh, but, and then it's, and then it's a lot of Centennial and Cascade in the dry hop as, as well as, you know, some other varieties. Um, so my last, my last question for me to, to come up with this recipe finally is, is the question that all home brewers ask when they're, they're, they're doing an IPA, which is, um, what, what should the dry hop per gallon or per, per barrel B, where, where would you expect to see that for, for a West Coaster and with the varieties that we're looking at here? Yeah, you know, so uh, Blind Pig is, uh, is a pound per barrel. And um, I, I think if you want to carry a lot of the uh, hops through, but also have a nice malt contribution, um, a pound per barrel or equivalent in your, you know, homebrew scale working backwards, mm -hmm. uh, I still think that's perfectly acceptable. I have a, I have a friend, uh, who uh, Henry, who owns Monkish, brewery down in Los Angeles area, pretty well-known kind of cult brewery beer, yeah. beer enthusiasts go nuts over, over Henry's beers, which is, and they're, they're beautiful beers. And, uh, he, he loves blind pig and whenever he buys it and drinks it, or we do a beer trade, he'll always send me a text and say, are you, are you sure it's pound per barrel? Cause <laughs> it really can be explosive. So, you know, some of that is getting more yeast out, you know, and, and getting all the yeast out as much as possible. Some of it's that quick dry hop time. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons, but if you want more, you can certainly go up to two pounds per barrel. But, you know, I think you're gonna start overpowering some of the malt, that malt foundation that, that's there. But Pliny the Elder is, is, a, uh, is, is two pounds per barrel. And it's also worth noting the difference between T45 pellets and T90 pellets. T4, T90s are standard run of the mill pellets. Um, and T45s, they're now marketed by different names here in America. Yakima Chief has calls theirs cryo. And what the flavor difference is, aroma difference is, the aroma is, and flavor is more, is more true to type when it's in the cryo T45 for, format, whereas the T90 will still give you, it'll have a lot of those varietal characteristics, but it'll give you more of a depth of aroma and a deeper aroma. A lot of breweries and brewers in America like to use both because it gives them a more complex aroma contribution. Well, thank you so much for that. I've learned a huge yep. amount. I think I'm going to have a great recipe. Um, you know, I, I, I want to try and send a bottle to you. We'll see if we can get it. Right, we'll see if we can get it through. Yeah. <laughs> so that was probably the most productive, most educational hour I've had in my entire home brewing career. And I can't thank Vinny enough for that. I couldn't obviously fit it all into this video. So actually I've published the full interview and you can watch that up here. Whether you're a really geeky home brewer or just somebody who wants to know more about pretty much the origins of IPA in America to some extent, but also, you know, the processes, the ingredients and the, the kind of philosophy that goes behind it. It's all in there mixed in with all the technical know-how that Vinny's given us. Um, and that technical know-how means that I've come up with probably a recipe that just on paper looks like the best one I've ever come up with. And I'm very excited to dig into it and indeed get brewing it. So we're starting with extra pale Pilsner malt. I think that will give a really nice light body that allows the hops uh, to shine that won't get in the way. And then I'm gonna add in some best. Vinny likes to put that into his bigger IPAs to add a bit of a bit of body, a bit of mouthfeel, and a little bit more uh, kind of malt character that can poke through. And then I'm gonna be using Munich malt, not just because of the oxidation that uh, crystal malt can give, but more because it's got a much more kind of smooth, rounded, uh, caramel kind of flavor. It's not going to be like that almost like crunchy sugar kind of thing that you can get from Crystal that was pretty much 
the exact flavor of like old school IPAs like Lagunitas. Then we get to the hops. So I'm using exactly the same hops uh, that Vinny uses in Blind Pig IPA, partly because I love that beer, but also because all of these hops are, you know, really quite old school, if you'll excuse the, the cliche, old school hops. Uh, I didn't want anything like Citra, which he has put in there, or anything, you know, like Mosaic or any of the new guys, because I think that that would distract from the fact that this is an old school classic West Coast IPA. Those are beautiful hops, but I want this to speak of a certain time and indeed a certain place. So we're gonna bitter with Chinook. We've got Centenny on Cascade going in throughout the boil. Then towards the end of the boil, I'm going to add Simcoe so that I don't boil off too much of the beautiful character that the Simcoe has. And then we've got a massive addition just before Flame Out um, and throughout the Whirlpool as well. Loads more Simcoe, some Amarillo going in there to get that citric character that Brad and I talked about. Um, and then when we get to the dry hop, I'm gonna be going, it's just over eight grams per liter or two pounds per barrel and I'm gonna use Simcoe Cryo to get as much character out as I possibly, possibly can. So there is so much that could go wrong with this recipe. It's, it's not quite Pilsner Brewing. There is somewhere to hide, you know, with the amount of hops going in, but I need a really clean fermentation. I need clarity. I really need a really kind of clean malt character to it as well, so those hops can really shine. And I'm feeling a little bit nervous about that, and I really wanna do Vinny really Proud. So actually, I'm gonna do a thing we've never really done for our homebrew videos on the channel, which is a test batch. So even before uh, I test it for you guys, I'm gonna do a test batch just for me and see how it pans out. Good. So we're at the point where usually our video ends, we're tasting the beer, we're telling you it's brilliant, we're giving you the recipe to take home, and we're going over to get the thoughts of the brewer to see what they thought of it. Um, this time, I decided, obviously, I didn't want to let Vinny down, as I said, uh, so I was going to do a test batch, and I am so glad that I did. So this is the beer that we've ended up with. This is my first attempt. Um, there is lots about it that I love and there is lots about it that I hate. So I'm gonna be doing some serious tweaks both to the recipe and to the process to get this right. The first thing you'll note is that despite uh, eight days of lagering, I've still got quite a lot of haze there. Um, it's looking dark on camera, but it is quite nice and bright. Um, but I'd want a slightly more golden color, so I'm gonna take back a little bit of Munich, back a little bit of Best, and, and hope that extra pale pills now can, can really shine. Um, let's talk about the flavors and the aromas. So there's loads and loads of resin and pine. I'm really happy with that, but unfortunately what I've got, I think, is some slight notes of slightly stressed yeast. So I used two packs uh, of my WLP001 into 30 liters um, for a beer that was coming out at around 6%. And when I did that, I knew it was around about the pitching rate just under, but I think I need to pitch significantly higher. So I think, I think I'm gonna to have to do a starter, which is something I usually try to avoid doing. It's a little bit of a pain, um, but I think it's, it's the only way to do this. That will get a third packet in there, and I think we're better off with a starter. This beer also came out a little bit dry, so I'm gonna go up one degree C in the mash, just to try and get a little bit more fermentable sugar, unfermentable sugar in there, sorry. Um, which might mean if there's a touch more sweetness, a touch more body, the bitterness is about right. It was circling 75, pushing 80, the, the expected bitterness. I'm gonna bring it down by five. I'm gonna try and get it to around 70, just to take away, it's just a little bit gnarly, just a little bit too much. And I know it's bang fresh, but that's how I wanna enjoy this beer. So I wanna brew it to be perfect, pretty much straight out of the fermenter. So I'm gonna take the IBU down just a little bit. Um, <laughs> otherwise, perfect. Just gonna change the hopping rate, the yeast rate, uh, the malt bill. <laughs> the mash temperature, uh, otherwise smashed it, next batch. <laughs> 